man is the talk in the town. You know the news get the wrong. This year them carnival ban is 2,000 strong. The fever spreading like ants. The people can't wait to France. Some of them done had a costume long in advance. With no jean and crap or Mary posting up late. We gon' make a jail for them 73. So 73. Folks is going on a romp, mama we really planning to jump, like a male kangaroo. For you see, we have to enforce a line, to compensate for the time that we lose, then we go. Everybody on the making merry day, man. We go jump in the line, we go roll, we go wind, we go make we back and again. Who are jumping, rolling, who are rolling, why? We're gonna make up for all that we do. That's, that's gonna happen. Trinidad, five miles off the coast of Venezuela, was originally the home of migrant Arawak and Carib Indians from the South American mainland. And the first stop in their journey to other Caribbean islands further north. Only a very few survive today. One of Columbus's famous voyages brought him to the island in 1498 and brought also the beginning of the destruction of the ways and customs of these people. Today, the survivors can still watch the arrival of the tall, fair-skinned strangers still seeking wealth, pleasure and new experiences, still bringing with them customs and methods alien to the tropical nature of the land. The wind is calm. Humidity 82 percent. Port of Spain's temperature is 78 degrees. In the Gulf of Paria, the tides are rising. The next high tide will be at nine minutes before midday. It is a new Trinidad that welcomes them. A nation in which modern technology rubs shoulders with ancient cultures. A land of many races. The dominant colonial influences have been British and French, even though the first European invaders were Spanish. The major law court of the land, the Red House, is a symbol of this past. First built by the Spanish, it was once destroyed by fire, but was immediately rebuilt by the British for the same purpose. The Napoleonic Wars in Europe left the neighboring French colonies unprotected. Slave uprisings, the most famous and successful of which was the Haitian Revolution, forced the colonists to flee. The Spanish government, which had long neglected Trinidad's development because there was no gold in the island, welcomed the wealthy refugees with open arms, offering free land to all who were Catholic and prepared to swear allegiance to the Spanish crown. So they came with their elegant traditions, masked balls and Mardi Gras, merging with the somber religious rituals of their fellow Catholics, the Spaniards. With the expansion of the island's agriculture, there were soon more black slaves than white colonists. I was caught and I was brought here from Africa. I must live from a land so far. I was caught and I was brought here from Africa. It was leaks like fire from the white slave master Every day a dog on the knees Weeks and weeks before we crossed the seas To reach in the West Indies And then 
they made me walk. Oh yes, I walk. I put it on no pain. I'm dying. Today, much of the country's wealth in oil and pitch depends upon the labor of the descendants of Africans. In the old days, the burning of the sugar cane, known as canvule, signaled the harvest. At other times, it was a sign of revolt. Harvest was a festival time for the black workers, and their own often suppressed traditions and customs came to the fore. When drums were banned by the colonial authorities, the surviving rhythms of Africa were preserved in the use of bamboo beaters in a tradition known as Tambu Bamboo. Today, many of these festive customs still survive. The Dundu, a women's drumming tradition, is almost extinct. These are probably the last of the traditional women drummers in the island. Various forms of traditional stick dancing, similar to dances in West Africa, survive under the collective name Moko Jombi, Jombi being our own local term for a member of the spirit world. One of the most exciting of these festive traditions is a stick fight. It brought together groups of slaves from neighboring plantations who were usually kept apart. Special songs composed for these occasions and traditional ones kept alive a sense of tribal identity. It was one of the few occasions when they were free to meet and talk with one another. <laughs> The stick fight festival, though suppressed, still managed to survive. Today's stick fighting is a blend of dance and combat in which the winner must be the first to draw blood from the head of his opponent. festivals were not all that the Africans brought. A free day could just as well be a day for Gayap, a tradition of voluntary communal work such as fishing, or working around their homes, grating corn for cuckoo and other African delicacies. Or baking bread in ovens molded from clay, just like the Yoruba Laru, still seen in western Nigeria. Then there were rituals. Rituals practiced in utmost secrecy. Rituals of blood and regeneration. 
like the Shango cult embedded deep in the hearts and souls of Yorubas, torn from their West African homes, which served to keep the most profound racial identity alive. Shango, god of war, spirit of thunder, father of the will to survive. Gordon Manley, Manley. Then, as I stand here, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, we the Af African tribe, we the sheep race, but through all the changing scenes of life, in coming in joy, the presence of my God is still my heart and soul. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, with me exalt his name, when in distress to him I call you to my rescue. All who come to sup with us today, yeah. the African people to see, yeah. by the cord with love, by the cord with love. Naturally, such rituals are even more brutally suppressed than festive customs. This led to various evasive tactics, such as the representation of African gods with Christian images with which they fooled their white masters into believing that they were practicing Christian rituals in their own way, but at heart the ritual remained African. <laughs> ceremony today reflects the influence of Christian rituals and music, but as the ceremony develops and religious fervor takes over, the participants revert to African rituals and languages. transports the high priestess in a trance into the world of spirits. white birds and a young goat whose head must be severed with a single blow if he is to be accepted by the god. The blood of the lamb is not a Christian prerogative. <laughs>
emotions, rhythms, which are at the very heart of the African contribution to carnival. Carnival reflects another major influence. After emancipation, thousands of Indian workers, both Hindu and Muslim, were brought in to work the plantations abandoned by the newly freed Africans. Today, most of the agricultural land is worked by Indians. <laughs> One of Trinidad's major annual festivals, second only to carnival in pageantry and in the attention it attracts from people of all races, is the Muslim Indian Festival of Hussein. We're cutting this tent from half. It had to have a prop at the back. And it had to have another prop at the side to hold it. We will move that middle post and bring it straight out. All right, cool. Central to Hussein is the Chacha, an elaborate structure built by prominent members of the community while fasting. It resembles a bejeweled mosque on which centuries rather than months of loving labor have been lavished. The festival commemorates the death of two warrior princes, Hossein and Hassan, who were killed on a jihad. The Tajah is first brought to public view on the night of the full moon. shaped decorations representing the moon and also representing the dead warriors are carried in procession in the streets where they perform a symbolic kiss. And then move on to pay homage to the main Tatcha. celebrated by Muslim communities in India and Pakistan. But in Trinidad, it has become a central feature of the life of the whole Indian community, whether Muslim or Hindu. Indeed, many Trinidadians of African descent also take part in the preparation for and observance of the festival. African contribution to carnival has been rhythmic expression, 
The major Indian contribution is surely to be found in the spectacular use of color combined with meticulous craftsmanship. of solemnity creeps into the final hours of the festival when a last prayer led by the imam is said around the moons that have recreated the souls of the past for the last few days. result of such careful labor is torn apart by the same hands that built it. <laughs> Cast adrift upon the sea. of the African drum and tambu bambu evolved Trinidad's unique contribution to music, the steel band. Known locally as Pan, it developed when drummers discovered the powerful resonance of the oil drum. The sound of Pan is at the heart of carnival. Orchestras of steel are drawn through the streets of Port of Spain, followed by thousands of loyal and passionate fans. It was discovered that by dividing the pan into segments of different sizes, whole musical scales could be created. Tempers run high when steel band's men make their first public appearance at the Panorama competition three days before Carnival Monday. There seems to be a tradition of violence associated with the appearance of the steel bands stemming from the riots which often broke out in the early days when the middle-class government attempted to ban this expression of working-class culture. Steel band instruments were invented and are still made by members of the black working class. Early steel bandsmen like Winston Spree, Carlton Ford, Ellie Manette and Scriba Maloney are not just heroes of pan, but also the black workers' struggle to forge a cultural identity of his own. Thank <laughs> you. 